<laughs> Hi everyone, we're here with uh, Pam, Mike, and Mark. We're doing another Franklin Talk. I'm Carrie Lazat. I do video production, and I'm going to jump behind the scenes and let our candidates take over. So have fun, everybody, and um, talk to you later. Okay. Uh, we'll do introductions as we've done each time. Um, my name is Pam Hansen. I'm your village president. I was elected by you in 2016, and I'm seeking your votes as a write-in candidate uh, for this on November 3rd. So uh, um, I'm going to introduce my colleagues, Mike and Mark. Hi, everybody. Michael Seltzer here. I'm your uh, Franklin Village trustee and um, elected uh, in uh, 2010, 2012, 2016, and asking for your support for my fourth term here in 2020. And I uh, would like to introduce my friend and colleague, former farm, farmhouse owner, Mark Hink. Thank you, Mike. Uh, my name is Mark Hinkey. I'm running for Village Trustee, uh, like Mike said. Um, Longtime resident here in Franklin, 20 years, and I own the Farmhouse Coffee and Ice Cream Shop with my lovely wife. We ran that for a number of years, and that was actually the third business we had owned here in Franklin. So uh, really in tune with uh, Franklin, Franklin residents, and what's it take to run a business in Franklin Village? Tonight, we thought we would talk about community, building community, and ideas and experiences that the three of us have had as members of the Franklin community. Um, in As part of our campaigning, all three of us have spent time with residents, knocking on doors, riding our bikes, at least Mark has, and uh, meeting, with, uh, meeting with people in the village to talk about what's on their minds. One of the things that I feel like I've heard and was an inspiration for suggesting this topic is um, the extent to which people feel connected to the village. And if there's something that gets in the way, what is that? So that's the topic for tonight. We didn't rehearse this. We are open to your questions. But I think what we want to do first is to start out telling you, telling, um, uh, you about you know, our own volunteer experiences and, and what we learned from those. Um, would either of you, oh, I guess I'm up first. <clears throat> uh, so um, uh, I have had the honor of riding a, in, a, in a vintage car for several years in the Franklin uh, Roundup Parade, and that's me and an old Thunderbird uh, a couple of years ago, I think. It was a great experience, and uh, my, my comment about that is that I've spent several years in the FCA. I love that organization. Mark and Mike will talk about it and, uh, and, and why we think it's just a great place for people to become involved in, in the village. I also volunteer as your village president. This is me getting sworn in last time by Eileen Palker in our huge lobby of our village office. Um, other volunteer experiences that I've had, um, if you go to the next slide, there you go, Carrie. I was um, a core member of Senator Bear, Rosemary Bayer's um, uh, election uh, uh, campaign team, and I was responsible at one point for a, this is the um, uh, Crowfoot uh, uh, ballroom bar in Pontiac. And this is the Pontiac High School band that, that's their performing band. It's just absolutely stellar. And they agreed to, um, to perform for us. I had the pleasure of meeting the kids and working with the band director. They have a really successful fundraiser um, back in 2018 when she was elected. I also um, am a master gardener and I teach gardening classes. And um, this is I just pulled this from some materials I had from a recent class. And the final thing, you know, I was really impressed by Mark Hankey's list of volunteer experiences. So I really dug down deep and, um, and uh, I thought I'd mention that, um, you know, back when we were all making masks for our friends and families, I did too. So I, um, most of my, invo it, my volunteer involvement has been in the village and, uh, and it's been a great experience. That uh, that did not look like a mask to me, and I was about to withdraw my endorsement for you. Well, it was a wonderful mask. <laughs> uh, okay, well, if I may, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it from here. Uh, yeah, let's see how much better you can do. <laughs> oh God, 
So I am uh, particularly proud of the fact that I came from the the FCA. When my wife, Lori, and I moved here, in, well, we'll show that. I'll, 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 I'll give you a brief. Uh, when I came into the village in 1995, the first thing we did was join the FCA. It was a great experience, and I met so many wonderful people. And uh, the, the FCA meets on a monthly basis, or did at that time. And we are the owners of the Village Green, the space that everybody knows as our baseball fields, our tennis courts, our playground, all that green space. That is owned by the FCA. It is not owned by the Village of Franklin. Your taxes do not go into that. Your donations to the FCA, which we ask for a $50 annual donation go to maintain those grounds and on those grounds is where we all cut our teeth i mean that's where the roundup 75 years strong this past year um, was uh, developed and happens every labor day where hundreds of people from all over various communities including franklin come and celebrate the day and we have rides and games and ponies and all kinds of fun stuff for the kids. We have our silent auction. Uh, we have a car show. Pam and I ride in that car show <laughs> every year. She got the Thunderbird. I always had Mr. Schubert's classic Rolls Royce. Um, in any event, I'm very proud that the FCA is where I learned so much about the village of Franklin and the social aspects. Uh, what you're seeing here are other, <laughs> other things that I do. I am very involved in the seniors community here in uh, the uh, metropolitan Detroit area. I deliver Meals on Wheels. Uh, that is a photo of me at Next, which is our uh, seniors facility. It's in the Midvale School in Birmingham. For those Franklinites uh, that don't know about it, it is a wonderful seniors facility with all kinds of classes and art and fitness and health and all kinds of fun stuff to do at Next. And it's available to any Franklin villager. And I serve Meals on Wheels there uh, each week. Uh, this is a picture of me doing hospital rounds. I take my two puppies, my adopted Franklin and adopted Winston, uh, adopted both at the Franklin Roundup. And I visit seniors and people in Beaumont Hospital. And it brings a great smile <laughs> to their faces when they see our puppies and they, uh, they love they love that. Oh, my gosh. Um, and so that's uh, that. The previous uh, scene with me wearing um, colorful uh, Christmas lights uh, was where I serve meals to seniors. Uh, that's at uh, and that's and that right there is right there. Yeah. Is at Fleischman, which is in West Bloomfield. It's where my mother lived for years. It's where seniors in the Jewish community live. And I work there three days a week serving and creating preparing meals and entertaining our seniors. And after my mother passed away over a year ago, everybody said, well, you're not gonna be coming back and doing this anymore. And I said, no, of course I am. I actually love doing this and me and talking to my mom's friends and hearing all kinds of stories about them growing up together in, in the decades preceding us. So I continue to do that, although right now it's closed down for obvious reasons. Uh, the other photo with me in Santa Claus is at our Masons Lodge. I'm a Fraternal Order of Masons member. I'm a third degree member of the Masons. Those of you who know who the Masons are, we do charity work very quietly. It's a semi-secret organization. We have a secret handshake and then we have rituals that we can't talk about, but it's all good. It's all for the betterment of people. <laughs> and at Christmas time, we donate hundreds of dollars to families in the Detroit metropolitan area. And we take them uh, Christmas gifts and bring them to their homes. And it's a, it's a lovely experience. So that's a little bit about me and my volunteerism. But the bottom line is we're all volunteers on the Franklin Village Council. For those of you to, that don't know, our stipend is $25 a year. And we do this out of the goodness of our hearts because we truly care about our community. I truly care. I know Pam does and I know Mark does and Mark's gonna bring a lot to the table and he's got some great experiences to share. So I'll turn it over to Mark. I mean, that speaks so much. Um, community service and volunteerism, that speaks so much about who you are and what your outlook in life is and it's, it's a giving of yourself. So, um, you know, when asked to do the show, I, I brought up some of the things we did this year and prior years. Um, what you're looking at now, um, in March when the pandemic hit, uh, I work for Ford Motor Company, my day job, 
and uh, really what my role there is working on manufacturing processes and making them better. So we have a collaboration with 3M, the mask maker, and they asked us to help them out make those N95 masks that were in such short supply of. So um, I immediately, you know, had to go. I mean, it's exactly what I do for, for Ford Motor Company. So um, I picked up and uh, literally drove a thousand miles, uh, right, a thousand miles west to Aberdeen, South Dakota. And I worked, I worked at, at, at one of the factories there. Um, that, that was me in the factory, helping them make masks, helping them make their um, pr production, uh, run 24 seven operation nonstop. Uh, we came up with over 400 ideas. We raised their production 400,000 units per day. It went up from 700,000, 1.1 million masks per day. So that was such a very satisfying thing to go and do. Um, you know, actually have direct help uh, for all these first responders and uh, could not be more satisfied. It was, uh, we, we worked nonstop. We worked every day of the week. We worked, uh, you know, 12 hours a day on the weekends until we came home in uh, in mid uh, in mid April. Oh, what you're seeing here, this is the ice rink. So a lot of folks asked about the ice rink and when I had farmhouse coffee and ice cream, we we're wondering like, what are we gonna do for the winter time? And I talked to the village administrator and said, why don't we build an ice rink? He said, I oh, can't do it. I said, well, don't, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll take that challenge. I'm, I'm not afraid of challenge. And um, I went out and I, uh, you know, I went to the village council. They they gave me permission to do it. The fire department came with 39,000 gallons of water. Uh, I built this ice rink literally by hand, um, donated. I bought a kit for the tarp and for the forms and went to Lowe's to, to buy all the lumber. I donated it to the village, um, built it for two years, and it was such a neat thing to do. It was, um, you know, I mean, hundreds of people came out there. So that was fun to do. I, I was I was proud of it. It was proud to bring something to the village green in the dead of winter. So that was, that was just fantastic. Um, and there were some write-ups in the newspaper about it too. So uh, let's see what else we have there. So uh, scouts is a big thing. All about scouts. Scouts is about leadership, leadership and service to the community. So I've been involved in scouts since, since my son was literally six years old, uh, all the way through. Uh, he just did his Eagle project at the Franklin gazebo. That gazebo, when you stand there this weekend, it was a year ago that we painted and rebuilt those stairs and um, you know, really did a lot of work on it. A lot of the posts were, were broken. So I was proud to be with my son. Uh, I'm an Eagle Scout myself. So it's it fun to do, do that with him, help him get his Eagle badge um, and uh, you know make that look real nice. So uh, Scouts has been a real part of the community. Uh, my dad was my Scout master. So when my father passed away, um, the troop needed a new trailer for camping. The old one was probably 15 years old. So I donated the funds to help them buy a brand new trailer. And you'll see, if you go to the Franklin grounds, you'll see a big red trailer there behind that little building by the tennis courts. That's, that's the trailer we donated to the scouts. So, um, scouts is just a fantastic organization teaching young men to become leaders and to think more of themselves. Um, all the scouts end up doing service projects for years. Um, here's another thing. Um, when I came back from, from 3M, uh, we're doing puzzles and things like that. And I thought we should build uh, one of those, instead of a, one of those free libraries for books, let's bring a free library for puzzles. So this little puzzle box I made, um, made it in my, on my driveway. Uh, if you come to 14 Mile Wing Lake, you'll, you'll see the puzzle box. You'll, uh, you'll also you'll see a lot of campaign signs, but uh, th this has been really popular. Uh, there are people every day coming out there. So, so this is a, just a nice little light natured uh, community service project I'd done uh, back in May. So there you go, a few things about Mark Hinkey. Great stuff, Mark, great stuff. And I think what we are so proud of in the village of Franklin is the high level of volunteerism we have. I mean, we do have a tremendous number of people who give of themselves tirelessly for our community. We have mobile watch, which a lot of people may or may not know about, yep. as a secondary level of great security to our already fantastic first class police department. Yeah. I know, Mike, that you're a member and I'm a member. I am indeed. <clears throat> Another um, uh, opportunity for volunteering in the village is um, um, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna let Mike talk as much as he wants about the FCA. Uh, but um, you know, we have um, we have uh, the library, the library board, the friends of the library are always are looking for people to plug into that community. They're wonderful people. We have one of the best libraries in the area. Right. It might look small, but it's mighty. Um, we have. <clears throat> from a from a government point of view, you know, think about think about getting on one of our commissions, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the the uh, Historic District Commission, the Planning Commission. Though every year about July, member um, uh, positions open up because that's when terms start and stop. And uh, if you're interested in in service to the community and our our are um, about about government. I think that's a great way to learn about the organization. Um, I, I see a question. Uh, I, your community service experience, philanthropy with both service and donations is inspiring. I haven't seen anything close from other trustee candidates. Uh, you know, I haven't talked with them about it, but I'd encourage them to um, uh, to talk about that with community members as they are, you know, running their own uh, campaigns. What I'm really clear about in this village is, and this was made clear to me, um, uh, you know, in in 19 in the mid 90s when I moved here, is Franklin is a volunteer community, and if there isn't a organization that you want to plug into, then do what Mark did, see a need, and then do something about it. Mark Mark built a skating rink. And he got, I think you got other dads to help you, Mark, while you were doing that. Who, who raised their hand and, uh, and, and helped out. Um, it was, it was a lot of work. So, but yeah. I was going to do it. And, you know, um, we have a lot of young families, you know, as I've been riding around the neighborhoods, uh, meeting them. And I've been asked more than once, like, can we do that again? So uh, I'm up for it. And I, I think we can get some of the volunteers to do it. Um, the, the liner, the the rink liner, that was put in that barn behind the Krieger house. Um, I don't think we've seen it. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's going to see the light of day in seven years, probably. So uh, we may need some help there. Well, um, uh, I think residents should stand by. Uh, we have a council meeting on Tuesday night, and um, and uh, I suspect there will be a conversation about a winter ice rink. Um, <laughs> As, as part of that meeting, uh, partly okay. because of your conversations, Mark, but but I've heard other residents talk about how much fun that was and how much people miss it. So I yes. would I would definitely encourage people to step up. We are a volunteer community, as Pam uh, uh, articulated very well. It takes a village to run a village, and uh, you know we we are small and mighty. We're only two square miles. But within that two square miles, there are so many people that have done so many nice things for our community. And like I know Pam always refers back to me to talk about the FCA. That's where my heart is. It always has been. It always will be. And I think the FCA is just one of the finest organizations. And we have some new young people that are coming to participate in the FCA. And they are the next leadership of that community organization. And I, I give them a great support and I appreciate them greatly. Uh, there's a question about Krieger House. Do you want to take that one, Pam? Uh, I, I can. Um, the question is who pays for the Krieger House? Uh, the Krieger House was sold um, to the village. Um, I think it's not 2012, if I'm not wrong. Uh, the Krieger House was a project uh, of a group of people in the village that rescued a house. Um, on Wellington, um, it was going to be torn down. It's a it's a, a Greek revival farmhouse. Uh, the woman who lived there was wonderful, and um, this group of people um, uh, raised funds to move the house to a spot behind the village office. Um, I think that um, the so so the restoration and movement was funded by um, this org this group of people. Um, and and uh, the village now is responsible for the um, uh, maintenance and paying the utilities and expenses of the Krieger House and campus, scheduling its use, and uh, um, uh, yeah, and pretty much. I mean, it's a, it's it's and and cleaning it. You know, the old shed is now uh, some state-of-the-art bathrooms and 
Um, I know that the village staff has stepped up the cleaning, so it's cleaned every day of the week now, and um, it's, it's been a, a great uh, community asset. I was involved in the moving of the Krieger farmhouse and building, and I was particularly interested in that because, A, it was saving a historic home, and mm -hmm. it was on Scenic Drive, not on Wellington. And my house is on Scenic Drive, and I haven't- It was Scenic? Oh, sorry, it was on Scenic, you're right. And my, and my house is an 1840s house that was also mm -hmm. rescued. It was a previously located on Northwestern Highway restaurant called Franklin House. And when it was announced that that Franklin House had closed and was gonna be torn down, the owners of the property uh, that lived on Scenic Drive bought it from Southfield Township uh, for a dollar and then paid to move it. There are articles about that move in 1972 where they, they uh, transported the house in pieces and delivered it to its current location where my wife, Lori, and I live. And so I'm a big uh, historic preservationist. I appreciate that. And I was very involved in helping to move the Krieger farmhouses. And it was designed to be a community center. It was designed to be something the entire community could use, it could be a meeting space. It could be a place where people could gather and have coffee and play cards, much like they did at Farmhouse. Um, it hasn't evolved to that unfortunately. It was designed to be a budget neutral. It has not evolved to that either. Uh, that requires some effort further from us and from our village uh, administration, but it's not that it hasn't been attempted. We just haven't had uh, the luck of finding uh, sources uh, that were willing to say rent space within the Krieger house, but it's a beautiful house and I'm happy that we saved it. And we should also thank the owners of the property uh, Craig, and I can't think of his last name right now, but Craig and his wife um, were so generous in, uh, they helped pay for the cost of that move. They did. They funded the move, as I recall. So, so they, so they Mike, live in a big, beautiful home on, on Scenic Drive. Mike, you said something that uh, when we're talking about community service and volunteerism, uh, it takes a village to run a village, right? And and that that's not a nice way to look at it. Yeah. Um, for as awesome as Franklin Village is with these historic buildings, Really, it's the Franklin residents, the people that make the village. It's not just the building. So, uh, you know, Pam brought up about community service and, and opportunities to to volunteer. Um, I, I just think, think that's fantastic. It's the residents that make Franklin Village special. The buildings are great and awesome, but really it's the community people. And, you know, Pam, you had mentioned about uh, all sorts of outreach to folks and wanting that, that kind of uh, connection, especially new residents coming to Franklin, how, uh, you know, tying them in with the village and, um, you know, making them feel part of the village, having that inclusion. I, th I think that's, that's really what we're here to talk about. You know, it, we know that the, there are more young families moving into the village. Uh, we know that the number, the census will show that when we get it, but, but we, we, we do know it. Um, and and uh, I think it's really hard to connect in. That's feedback we've gotten. So what are some ideas that we might be able to offer people on steps to take to join um, one of these organizations perhaps, or find your place in the village community? Um, uh, I was lucky. Um, I had somebody that I'd made friends with in my street who was part of the FCA, and she insisted, in fact, I think it was Carol Fisher. Um, she um, brought me to a board meeting and uh, Shelly Williams, who's a former um, board member, took over and demanded that I sign up, and I was too intimidated to say no. But 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 the point is is I think those of us who've lived here for a while need to reach out to new residents and invite them to something. You know, we have a diversity committee now. We have um, we have ad hoc groups that we can that we need community input. And I think part of that's on council. I think it's partly also on those organizations that exist to look for new people to be part of them. And I think, I, I, if I may say along those lines, all three of us are very focused on that. And all three of us are very supportive of connectivity in the village of Franklin. Connectivity vis-a-vis -vis our sidewalk streetscape plan, which is really the topic of, of everyone's interest at this point, is all about connecting, is all about bringing these young families, these new people that we haven't known before that are suddenly making their way 
towards the village green and we'll be able to do so much easier when we have the sidewalks and connectivity. I think we're getting a signal from our producers. It's time to wrap up. <laughs> And, and here's a suggestion, and, and I don't know who's going to take this up, but keep talking about this. What about a mentor buddy system? Long-term residents match with newer residents. I believe the FCA did this at one point, and it would seem to me that that there's that is a huge opportunity. So, uh, you know, let's not lose these ideas, but let's keep talking about it and put it in the forefront. It's really easy to be isolated. It's, it's harder to start and walk over to the village green and jump into a Zumba class. Um, it's, it's hard to call somebody you don't know and say, hey, I heard there was a board meeting, I'd like to come and learn about your organization. But that invitation is often the key in my so, experience. So, so Pam, one of the things that I think we need to do is really take that proactive step. Okay. Um, so, so as village council with FCA, uh -huh. with our local agents, you know, learn who's moving into the village and when really you know, we need to extend our hand out to them and yeah. be generous, be gracious and go up there and, and meet them in a COVID friendly, friendly way now. But go out there and, and, and you know, we take the first step and reach out to them to welcome them. Um, you know, I certainly have heard from these new residents that they didn't they just didn't get that sense. And no, they haven't used to be there. Right. We used to have welcoming committees. So I think that's a key thing we need to take on. Uh, you know, finishing out this year in 2021 is really well. You've got, my, you've got my commitment to doing that. Absolutely. Okay. Our producer is starting to wave her arms. So we're going to say goodbye. I'm Pam Hansen. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you would reelect me as village president. You need to write me in and fill in that little square box next to my name. And thank you so much for listening tonight. I'm Michael Seltzer. Thank you for your support. I look forward to another four years reelectmichaelseltzer.com. Thank you. And I'm Mark Hankey. I'm looking forward to your vote. Every vote counts. Uh, I'm going to earn your yeah. vote, earn your trust, and we're going to govern in a fair and open way with my friends Pam Hansen and Mike Seltzer. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night, everybody.